and raised in the great northwest of the United States, uh, really northern California, but I don't mean San Francisco, I mean Humboldt County, which is about five hours north of there. Uh, rainy all the time, you can go outside, but it's going to be cold, it's going to be damp, and uh, you can stay in all day and play drums. Like a lot of people, when I was uh, 10 years old in school, they sent me home with a notice to my parents saying, your child has the opportunity to play an instrument. and. Uh, I think my mom basically just said, you're going to try something. You don't have to stick with it, but you're going to try something. And for some reason, once that was established, I knew it was going to be drums. So I would haul my snare drum to school with my little sticks, and I had a trailer, I'd tow it on my bike and go to school and play with my little tuxedo and orchestra and uh, all county bands and things. I was fifth and sixth grade. As far as playing influences go, I had sort of three eras that I can think of in my head. When I first started playing, I was really into Rush and Van Halen. And Neil Peart and Alex Van Halen are kind of a funny combination of influences because one is so instinctual and one is so intellectual and analytical. But it's kind of a cool balance. Um, and then one day I heard Tower of Power and that was a whole nother section of my life. Uh, David Garibaldi is my single biggest drum hero of all time. I don't really think I play that much like him, although I'd like to play like him, but uh, I feel like he's just taken linear independence and layered coordination independence for drum set just to a point it's going to take generations to catch up. The guy is just a genius and he's still being a genius and he's my single biggest drum influence. And then I'm also, later on I got really into the electric jazz players, the Dave Weckles, the Dennis Chambers, and Horatio Hernandez as well as the rock fusion players, Rod Morgenstein, uh, Simon Phillips. So that was sort of the, the last set of things that have really turned me on. I always like to mention Vinny Coliuta. He's, he's, he's one of my favorite drummers as well. I just don't listen, list him as an influence because he hasn't really affected my playing as much as I would like, to, like him to have. I'd love to sound like that guy, but I don't really think I do. But he's one of my favorite drummers on the planet. The people I just mentioned are they're really engaging a lot of them with stage presence as well. And then there's also uh, players, I used to love watching Miles Davis on stage, and I don't know how to define that, because half the time he'd be standing there was back to people, but he just kind of had that charisma. Um, gosh, I know I'm gonna remember a bunch of people later who uh, I love to watch on stage. I was in a band a long time ago that did a festival with George Clinton. That, that is just a circus on stage, and that's fun to watch too. So sometimes it's not really the type of music that that I play that you know that's fun to watch. There's things to be gained from watching all kinds of music. Most of this section uh, comes and goes between a, a five over two polyrhythm. I really like that particular polyrhythm for some reason. So the two part is boom, 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 and the five. Will go. One thing that I wish somebody would have shared with me while I was coming up about practicing is mid-range goals. Short-range goals are easy. You got a gig, you're scared you're gonna suck, so you practice for Friday's gig, and that takes care of itself. Long-range goals are easy too. I wanna be the best player on the planet, I'm gonna be the next Neil Peart. And the mid-range goals, where you're really trying to identify something you'd like to be better at in your playing, but it might take a few months. Um, that's really helped me a lot later in my career and it would have helped me earlier in my career if I would have sat down and said, where do I want to be three months from now, six months from now? Uh, so mid-range goals is a big part of my strategizing what to practice nowadays. And also sticking with a consistent thing. If you're going to try to get better at something and it's going to take you a few months, you can't do that thing Monday, do something different Tuesday. It turns out that you've only done a given thing one day a week. So you really want to I'm trying to make progress on something and it's going to take a while. You want to at least try to hit it, you know, five, six days a week. And now I sound like an instructor. I do a fair amount of teaching, so I'm always practice every day. A lot of things that Travis Larson band is going to be on the horizon in the next, in 2010. And it's just, we're waiting for the pieces to fall into place. But as, as drummers, we are in a position more than anybody else in the band to make the people around us better, to elevate other people's game. So you can show up on a gig 
and play great and overplay and really be impressive. And people who don't know the music might just think you're killing it, but the other play people aren't going to play as well. So the first responsibility as a drummer, I feel, is to make a good foundation for everybody else to play well. Uh, it might be volume, it might be that the singer straining to be heard so you need to come down, it might be tempos are just a little off and people can't phrase correctly, but as drummers we really are driving the ship and you're in a position to, to make everybody around you better. I know that sounds ridiculous while I'm doing it and it's not what I'm playing on the, on the screen. There you go. There's also one other thing I like to do which is play the five over two and then phrase the five part of that polyrhythm in four voices. And I've never gotten any feedback that suggests that that's one of the better parts of the solo, but I like it so much that I always do it. We're on our way out right now, uh, passing through Las Vegas and San Antonio to Texas, Austin, Texas for the South by Southwest Festival. So we'll be out there in uh, a week from when I'm doing this. It may be uh, passed by the time this is... Larson Band is out this year promoting the new live double DVD and double CD. It's just an audio from the show. It's a performance. It's a live performance. It's called Rate of Change Live, and it's just what we do on stage. There's also a bunch of bonus material, interviews, more than you even want. on TravisLarsonBand.com for upcoming dates and what we're up to, and keep an eye on the TheDrumDungeon.com.